Are you a sex graduate? <laughs> For most people, graduation means a mastery in theory. Unfortunately, and particularly with sex, it's not just what you know, it's what you do with what you know that counts. In today's podcast, we're busting some myths about the knowledge of sex and the practice of sex and everything that's involved in between. Hi, I'm Dr. Neelima Deshpande. I'm a gynecologist with three decades of international experience in women's healthcare. I have expertise in menopause and sexual health. And you're listening to V for Vagina, the podcast that dispels myths and misunderstandings about the vagina and empowers women to talk about their sexual needs, preferences, to improve their sexual well-being and vitality. I had two amazing postgraduate students sitting in front of me. Science is their primary subject and they know all the theory about how to have sex. Plus they've watched a lot of porn. Unfortunately, they haven't got a clue where it comes to knowing what to do in the bedroom when they're lying naked next to each other. I don't want to include any kind of blame, shame or guilt here for anybody who's going through this. But the truth is, any kind of experience in life has to be felt with the body. The experience has to be integrated into the body and learnt from to be of any use to us. And sex is no different. I come across generations of young boys and girls who've had so-called sex education but haven't got a clue how to communicate about their needs and preferences to become sexually aroused, to maintain their arousal, and what to do if things start to go wrong, and how to talk to their partner to maintain a loving relationship. Yes, sex education is important. And if you've had one, you're really lucky, because there's huge groups of people who never get any kind of sex education. And the only time they ever get to learn anything about sex is through porn, which is a bit like watching the Avengers movies and expecting some superhero to land in your bedroom every time you have some kind of desire. We'll talk about porn another day. But suffice to say that porn is not sex education. It can give you some ideas about how to have better sex, but most of the time not. The way to integrate sex education into your body is to actually recognize what your body does for you what your own erogenous zones are through self-exploration, self-appreciation, using a mirror to actually look at your genitals and understand where the different bits are and what do they do. How does being relaxed affect your ability to get aroused? What happens when you're tense and anxious? Masturbation is a huge taboo subject in most societies and various kinds of religious leaders and adults and society and cultural leaders will tell you Masturbation is a bad thing, especially when it's used to escape from or as a distraction from everyday life issues, which is true. But learning to masturbate is a huge learning experience, not just for the person himself or herself, but also as part of couples treatment. If you don't know what turns you on, how can you actually communicate to your partner or teach them what makes you get turned on? How do you enjoy a shared experience? when you have no understanding of what your body is capable of. Just a few days ago, I had this young lady in my consulting room complaining about her husband saying, God, he just doesn't know how to kiss properly. He doesn't know how to touch me properly. You know, he doesn't know how to get me aroused. And you know, when I'm with him, I, I just can't enjoy my orgasms. When I asked her, well, have you told him what you like? She says, but I don't know. Shouldn't he know? No. Why should anybody else know about your body? You need to know about your body and tell that person, look, this is how I like to be touched. This is how I like to be stimulated. When you do this, I get turned on. When you do this, I get turned off. Please do more of this, this way. And you take their hand and show them what to do. This is the lived experience of great sex, not just some theory in sex ed class. And then the verbal expression of how you want things to be like this young lady is like, why can't you always get it right? 
you know, why do I have to teach you how to do this? Shouldn't you already know? The accusations, the blame, shame and criticism have put the man off forever. He just imagines trying to have sex with her and loses his erection. So learning to communicate your needs and preferences and wants in a loving, welcoming manner is just as important as knowing what you want. That requires learning some verbal skills. It also requires some amount of emotional mastery when you're feeling frustrated or angry. Prioritizing fun, pleasure, humor and joy as part of the sexual experience is just so important in couple communication, in maintaining a good relationship and developing the bonding that happens with great sex. Whether or not you have an orgasm and whether or not you have penetrative sex. And here, I can't emphasize enough the mind-body connection for great sex. See, the mind can play many tricks and it can make traumas out of anything. I'm not diminishing the traumas that somebody may have gone through in their childhood and adulthood. Certainly not. It's something to get help with, to integrate the understanding and knowledge for, but it's not insurmountable. With the right kind of help, even trauma survivors can experience great sex. And there's so many different techniques. Cognitive behavioral therapy, REBT, EFT, belief work, hypnosis, and a ton more. One key thing is to actually integrate the mind and body. The body is most functional when it gets the right nutrition and the right exercise. I've spoken several times before about how giving your body the best nutrition possible to nourish each and every cell contributes to great genital health. Your body's ability to be metabolically flexible, neurologically flexible, and also vascularly flexible is one of the best ways to ensure great sexual health and a great sexual response. After all, a great sexual response does depend on having great vascular supply to your genitals, to the breasts, to the brain, and have great sensitivity to sensations. Exercise is essential. Movement is essential. Building muscular strength, flexibility, joint health is just as important for great sex. Time and again, research shows that men and women who are physically active, fit and healthy have much better genital blood flow. This is apart from the confidence they feel when they look in the mirror. The confidence to appear naked in front of their partner. To feel good about their body. And good physical health also contributes to great pelvic floor health. The ability to contract and relax the pelvic floor muscles is essential, both for female sexual function as well as male sexual function. Particularly if you look at today's generation and our work that involves sitting for so many hours, it just contributes to a tight pelvic floor, tight hamstrings, poor back muscles, poor core strength. And all of this naturally leads to poor sexual health. It's really important to understand that presence, play, positions, preparation, power, priming, so many different P's, and the permission to have great sex are just as important. Which is why I say, simply being a sex graduate because of what you know isn't enough. So all of these dynamics that come into play when you want to have great sex. Learning to ask for consent and permission to share what you want. Permission to set the boundaries if you find something uncomfortable. How far are you willing to go? Being present to the experience of pleasure as it unfolds not some pretense of what you expect it to be. If you need it, being willing to use lubricants and sex toys, being willing to reassure each other, to show, not just tell, to adjust your expectations and desires and wants, being willing to do your pelvic floor work, play, using all of these wonderful card games, sex toys, lubricants, bringing humor, into the sex conversation, making it fun and light. I had one couple who got turned off sex because the husband took this so literally, he started questioning his wife. And she says, I want to be in the experience. Let me close my eyes and feel the pleasure. I don't want to mess it up answering your questions. Stop asking me all the time if I'm enjoying it. You should know. And that's where the intricacies of communication come in. How do you tell your partner 
that you're experiencing pleasure. Take away the pressure of being a mind reader from them and tell them, smile and be happy. Understanding how to adjust your positions. Maybe sex is painful in one position. Instead of screaming out and saying, stop, 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 stop. It's actually much more helpful to say, can we pause here a little bit and have a signal? Maybe a raised finger or a hand that communicates to your partner that you need a break. Maybe experimenting with the woman on top, side to side, different positions. It's just as important to experiment, sometimes fully clothed, to see what kind of positions you can manage so that the fiddling doesn't interrupt your flow. Understand that sex can also be a power struggle in the bedroom. The person who says no has the most power. So shouldn't both of you have the ability to say no? So you know how far is enough. And this equality goes a long way in establishing a great relationship. And how do you future-proof your sex life? You've got it great now. You've got amazing conversations. It's humorous. It's playful. It's joyous. You have a multiple orgasms. It's looking great right now. How do you future-proof it? That's by having an open conversation about what you want to preserve about your great sexual relationship. How are you going to look after your physical and mental health so you always show up in the best way possible for your partner? What do you need to do to take care of your genital health, of your grooming, so you're always attractive, that you smell great, that it's a pleasure to be with you? How do you ramp up your communication skills about what you need and what you want, about different ways in which you can enjoy sex? And maybe you'd like to have a conversation about fantasy, about sex toys, vibrators, different kinds of lubricants. How do you plan on being in the best physical and mental state possible? How do you communicate your happiness about the great sex you're having with your partner? This discussion and a strategy and a plan with alternatives for what to do if things go wrong can be one of the best ways of future-proofing this amazing sexual relationship that you've built. I hope you've got some brilliant ideas for how you can become a master's in sex <laughs> from being a sex graduate. Someone who knows how to apply their knowledge and have a lived experience of great sex. I want to invite you to a very unique couples retreat where I give my individual and personalized attention for 15 days in a residential workshop for couples who want to overcome discomfort and pain during sex, including conditions like vaginismus, where they learn the role of the pelvic floor, mutual satisfaction, understanding communication about their needs and preferences, understanding how to communicate with the outside world and how to boost couple self-esteem. In this unique workshop where I give my personal attention, I can only take eight couples at a time. If it's something that you're interested in, get in touch with me to see if you're eligible to participate in such a workshop. Remember to like, subscribe and share this podcast with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you'd like to talk to me one-on-one -on -one for a personal consultation, get in touch with me via my website www.drdr Nilima, N double E L I M A, Deshpande, D E S H P A N D E dot com. And you'll find a button there where you can click and book a slot with me. And I'll be sure to respond to any of your queries. Thank you. Disclaimer This podcast is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's or listener's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. <laughs> <laughs>